Hello, this is Bobby Capuccio. Thank you for joining me on an exclusive interview. Today I have a very unique experience of being joined by two of the top experts in the field of business development for the fitness industry, Nick Jarvis and Bob Esquerry. What is the basis of anything that you do? Well, it's looking at why you do something. Before you start any program, do anything, you should understand the basic reasons why you're starting the program. And why do you want to start a management development program? Well, I suppose the first most obvious reason is because in the health and fitness industry, throughout the world, as far as we know, there is no formal management development program. Now, the two of you are world renowned and you travel the world speaking to thousands of people every year. Tell us, recently, in the past six months, what are some of the events or significant happenings in our industry that people listening to this should be aware of? Well, for me, uh, Bobby, it's, it's predominantly around people talking about results for members. You know, they're, they're working out that they're not getting results. And uh, I, I talk to managers all the time, fitness managers, and they're struggling to motivate the staff. And when you look at why they're unable to motivate the staff, the staff are not getting a real sense of satisfaction from the job. You know, they, we know, and I come from the UK, a lot of people are going into the field, they're going to university to get a degree in sports science, leisure management, health and fitness management. They're coming into the industry, they're highly qualified, and then they're becoming demotivated. And when we look at the reasons behind the demotivation, it's about getting results for members. So the number one issue that we have to look at within the industry for why we've gone into a state of decline is our customers actually achieving what they set out to achieve when they came in. The first question that came out of their mouths were, okay, we can't keep our members, we can't keep our employees. And I said, that's the same problem we have in the United States, every state, in Europe, down under, it's a global international problem. So the focus is, we're missing the connection. We have a club, it's great, it's making some kind of money, but not enough as you look at how many members are coming in, but how many are going out the back door. There's no connection process, and that's a consistent problem. We're going to improve your personal effectiveness. How you work on what you do yourself, so that you do that better. The second thing we're going to do is talk about how you can build teams through from initially recruiting them, which is Bobby's area of speciality, then, then taking them on board, inducting them, and then developing them, building strong, powerful teams. The third thing we're going to do is help you to work more effectively with individuals so that you can coach and develop them so they begin to fulfill more of their potential. So they use their own initiative, they feel empowered, and take greater responsibility for what they're setting out to achieve. And this is the thing to me that's the big issue. We know we've got retention issues. Uh, we know lots of people are leaving, both staff and, and members, and we're not really getting to the root of it. And when you look at leadership, leadership of the people is going to be the critical thing. What's the difference between highly effective leaders and leaders who are always striving yet never arriving at their goals? and we've come to a collective conclusion. Number one, as a leader, you need to literally become the leader that you yourself would look for. How you do anything is how every member of your team will do everything. Also, different employees need to be managed differently. There's no such thing, and don't buy into the most effective management style philosophy because it just basically doesn't exist. It's not enough to tell your team what to do, you need to take responsibility to show them exactly how to produce the results that you ask of them. And once that they demonstrate to you that they understand in no uncertain terms how to do what you're asking them to do, you need to hold them accountable to produce those results. Great leaders are also great connoisseurs of talent. They incessantly seek out and develop talent. It's not something they do, it's literally something that they are. Great leaders are also great learners. The fact that you're watching this right now means you are either a great leader already, or no matter what you have done or failed to do in your career so far, you're well on your way to becoming an outstanding leader. Whatever you focus on as a leader, that transmits a message to your staff. So for example, if a health club focuses on sales, 
It trans uh, transmits a message to all the staff that that's the key thing that's important. Now don't get me wrong, sales is important within a business. But the other part of the business, um, for me, which is even more important, is the keeping of the customers. Now, for me, the industry focuses very heavily on sales and it commits that message. Whereas the message we should be committing is one of this is a results-based industry. What is selling? And we know from our experiences that that's the, the fear of God in terms of our trainers. I can't sell. But defining selling, selling is the process of helping a person conclude that your product or service is of greater value than the price you're asking for. That being said, I do not believe, we do not believe in selling. We believe in building relationships. And once the relationship is there and the trust is there, the value is there, the sale segues from that, originates from that. Well, there's different ways of doing it. In the old ways, you would take a stick and beat them on the head. That's the wrong way. The issue is that, oh, that's one way. Well, that's one way. And that's the way it used to be done. Exactly right. But now we're saying, let's build a different relationship. Let's, yes, we're still their boss, but a boss that is their manager, also their leader, but also their coach. So what is the role of the manager in the 21st century? Well, for me, it's changed substantially and got much simpler. Actually achieving it is harder, but the role is simpler. And it's about helping other people to achieve their goals. So if I as a manager can help other people to achieve their goals, then I know that my goals are going to be achieved. So to do that, I've got to focus on all of my team's goals. Now this is very, very significant. And in fact, is something that most fitness managers do not do. Most fitness managers focus on a series of tasks. And if you look at the job descriptions of fitness professionals, they're often a series of tasks. There is very little that explains the outputs of those tasks, which really is the results that people are looking to achieve. So what I want you to do is to begin to focus on the outputs, the, result, the results, the goals that you're looking for your team to achieve. Because I know that if each of your team members achieves their goals, so will you achieve yours.